Yo, what's good guys? We are back at it again with another MLB The Show video for you guys. And today I'm going to be wrapping up my rankings of the outfielders to end season two. These are the outfielders that I think are viable to run. If you're using anybody other than some of these guys, they're probably subpar um, just relative to the meta is what it is. Uh, a couple of Team Affinity guys are kind of left off this list because I personally wouldn't use them or they were just kind of samey and blended in with the rest. Uh, and I just think there's better options. So if you're missing like uh, Raul Libanez, not going to be on the list. More of a first baseman anyway. Um, so for that reason, cards like that didn't really make it. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and hop in. We got about two more weeks to use these cards, give or take. Um, so I want to get this out to you guys super quick. Aaron Judge, S tier. The caveat with him is the height. If you're really uncomfortable with the tall strike zones, if you don't like his swing, then there's that but statistically the card's almost perfect all you could really ask him to do differently is a be shorter which is not gonna happen um and b just be a platinum glover because he's a very good fielder 76 reaction is kind of tough especially because you're going to play him in a corner and this card's a primary center fielder so he's going to take a hit um but he's still decent enough he's not going to cost you too many runs and with hitting stats like this he's going to get you those runs back and then some um, so I love judge cards. I think this is a really good year to use Aaron judge um, I think he's one of the better options. You could be running in the outfield at the moment um, Adam Dunn Probably gonna put him in the D tier I don't think any obviously no card on this list will probably be below the C tier just because these are the best cards I'm not including everybody. So the, you know DNF won't get used. So D will be for DH this is a card that I would strictly DH. He is going to be so poor in the field that he's going to cost you uh, just about as many runs as he's going to create. So it's kind of worthless to have him in the field, but as a DH, a very competent guy there. Uh, obviously, first base would be preferable for him, but um, Santander kind of just falling behind the meta. If you really want switch hitters, if you crutch switch hitters like that, if you have a really high value on them, then he's definitely still usable. Uh, but the contacts are a little behind. The clutch is in a decent spot, but the contacts are a little bit behind right now. The power is not insane, and he's also borderline DH material. He's just passable enough to where I wouldn't put him in here with like Adam Dunn. Um, but he's not. He's no spring chicken out there. Babe, probably A tier. Might be controversial because like Babe's maybe the best hitter in the game, right? The only downside is he might have to hit lefty lefty roughly half the time. Um, but he's just poor defensively, right? He has like 60 reaction. The arm strength doesn't really make up for it. He is also not a spring chicken. He's not very fast out there. Um, and there's just better spots, right? As a DH, he's S tier. As a um, first baseman, he's obviously S tier. But he's also not poor enough defensively to be on the tier of like somebody like Adam Dunn. Um, Bernie. A for me, um, it really depends on A, what difficulty you play on. If you're on Legend, he's probably S tier. Um, if you crutch switch hitters and put a really high value on switch hitters, which most people should because typically you hit better with switch hitters than, you know, single-handed hitters, um, then you could easily sneak up to S. But I think on, like, All-Star and Hall of Fame, he's just going to hit a good amount of balls that just don't have the juice on it. Obviously, perfect perfect, usually going to be a home run. Um, but just general fly balls with him. He's going to hit a lot that don't quite have the juice, um, but the corks help, and he's still a very good card. A lot of people had offense with me ranking him in the A tier on like the content reaction last time. I think he's still there. He's still a very good option, and it's just about what difficulty you play on and how much you value switch hitting. Uh, Brenton Doyle, probably the best defensive outfielder in the game right now, has very good contact, very good power, basically a five-tool player. Um, really nothing to hate on. He's right-handed Jaron Duran. If you don't like Duran, then Doyle's your guy. Uh, if you like them both, you can run them both, and your outfield will be gross defensively. <laughs> um, Rooker, this is a pure DH guy. I don't particularly love his swing, so I think Adam Dunn's a better DH, but um, I guess it just depends on if you need right or your lefty. Also, his contact's kind of low, so this DH tier is going to get kind of messy, right? Like... Brent Rooker is probably like a B tier, maybe A tier if you really like his swing DH, whereas Adam Dunn's probably an S tier DH. Um, so, you know, it's going to be tough within that tier. I'll try to keep them in order. 
uh, for the DHs. This Brian Reynolds is the wrong Brian Reynolds, but for the sake of the video, we will pretend as though it is the all-star one and I didn't make a mistake. Um, you know, st he's still a 95. Um, <laughs> decent, just really poor defensively. The hitting stats aren't really up to par anymore. He's kind of poor defensively. If you're using him, it's because A, he's a switch hitter, and B, he has one of the best swings in the entire game. Um, so that's kind of the justification for why you might would want to use him. Buck Leonard, honestly, in left field, I feel like he's S tier. Um, very good contacts, like 110 ish contacts. Uh, basically max out power. I believe he does have max out clutch and he's not bad defensively. I think he has like 85 reaction, like 70 something speed. That's on par with like Aaron Judge. He's not going to be any worse than Aaron Judge. It's just kind of what do you want? Uh, I believe he can only play left field. So he is very limited in comparison to some of these other guys. Um, but if you want to work him in, you can work him in. <laughs> Speaking of only playing left field, this Chipper Jones boss is pretty poor defensively he is almost on the dh tier you might could even make the argument that he is in the dh tier in the outfield um but what saves him is the swing he's probably the best offensive player in the game right now yeah your mileage may vary and some people don't get along with chipper as well as they probably should um but still he's statistically and just swing wise and the fact he's a switch hitter probably the best hitter on paper in the game um, and if you have somebody you like more at third base, or if you know that Chipper Jones is a fraud at third base, like he is, um, then maybe you do want to put them in left field and get some value out of them there. Uh, this Chris Morrell card has aged very well. Uh, I think he's probably C tier at this point, just because the contacts behind the curve a little bit, the power is still in a really good spot and he's still really fast, but his shield is kind of bad. So if he gets a bad jump on a ball, he might drop the occasional fly ball. Um, and also um the reaction's pretty poor so he will get some bad jumps occasionally um but he's still very good still has a good swing and he's still a usable card um kind of surprised with how well he's aged as the season went on um duke snyder usually a righty specialist i'm gonna need kind of a refresh on this card in particular uh so 109 which is probably slightly below average for where you'd want his contact left to be but max out against righties um, little low power wise against lefties, very good against righties, um, does have very good quirks being a legend and whatnot, max out clutch, not a bad fielder, uh, and not very slow. So statistically, <clears throat> I think he's probably on this A tier. He's almost like a poor man's Babe Ruth, a little better defensively, a little worse with the bat. Um, so he's, he's solid, honestly. And I typically like Duke guards. It's just the fact that you're going to have to hit lefty left. You're going to have some uncomfortable at bats against like Chris sale, Johan Santana, um, any wild card lefty stuff like that. Um, but against righties, he should absolutely rake. Dylan Cruz S tier. Um, he's up there very similar to like a Brenton Doyle, um, 112, 121. So a little more contact focused than Doyle, a little less power focused um max out clutch um people were talking about doyle's vision like bro like cruz has like 12 more vision than him like I, I, vision's such a fake stat um his fielding's very good the reaction's a little suspect and he's not the fastest so if you do have like a doyle or a duran that you want to run with him you probably put cruz in a corner um but he's still very good uh tatis a little dated at this point. I think I'd probably shift him down to B tier. The power against, I believe, righties. No, the power against lefties is pretty poor. The contact's not the best in the world. Uh, the power right's pretty good. The clutch is a little behind the curve. Um, and he is somewhat fast with good reaction. So if you play him in the right field, he's going to be one of the better defensive right fielders in the game. But I don't think his swing's that great. I don't think his hitting stats have really kept up with the power curve at this point. Um, and that's to be expected, right? Because he's a stepping stone collection in the Aaron, jo Aaron Judge um, All-Star collection. So he's not expected to be a world beater, and I don't think he is. Uh, Stanton, very similar to like Aaron Judge, honestly. And he's also another collection award. Uh, 125, 111, so slightly better contact than Judge, I think. Better power. Um, the clutch is still maxed. He's a very decent fielder. Um, 73 speed, 80 reaction, 84 fielding. Um, so really just very similar to Aaron Judge. Uh, if you were looking at playing Judge in right field, maybe that's the tiebreaker for you to decide that Stanton's better because that's his primary. So he will field it better than Judge will. 
Um, but if you want to run Judge in left and Stanton in right, no problem with that. They are almost carbon copies. One's a little shorter, still tall, but a little shorter. Um, and it's just kind of up to who swing you like more. I think I'm more team Judge, but I know a lot of people have had more experience with Giancarlo. I think he had a card earlier in the year that was pretty decent. He had that team affinity, and then he had the captain. A good amount of people used the captain uh, at the start of this season. So very solid card. Just depends on how you like his swing. James Wood, probably B tier. Might get some pushback for that. Uh, his swing's very good. A lot of people use the uh, spring training one at the very start of the year, spring breakout, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is like basically a home run derby card. 99, 100, 118, 120, 110. Um, decent fielding, decent speed. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's like his stats are basically very similar to like a Gary Sanchez, except there's not as much comp at catcher where there's a ton of better outfielders I think you could choose. But if you want to use him because the card art's clean or because he's an exciting prospect, uh, then he's definitely usable. Um, Jaron Duran up there with Doyle and Cruz for like the most meta center fielder you can have. In my, you know, uh, for my money, he's probably the best out of them. It, it does suck. You're going to have to have some lefty lefty at bats, but I think his swing is so butter. I haven't really struggled too much lefty lefty with him. 106 left, 115 right, 90 power left, 125 power right, um, 125 clutch, and basically a perfect fielder. He gets the diamond shield, which is all you really need. Um, has decent enough arm. You probably would like to see it a little bit higher, but the reaction's up there. If you put parallels on him, he can get maxed out reaction with 99 speed. Uh, I think he's somewhat tall. Yeah, six foot two. So you can't really ask for too much more out of a center fielder defensively. Uh, and the swings butter. Uh, J Ram, honestly, Mike could work into the B tier just because his offense is that crazy. I think he profiles more as a DH. This is literally a home run derby card. Um, has like 100 contact, maxed out power across the board. Uh, not very great clutch, very poor defensively, very slow. Um, but the swing is insane, and he's a switch hitter. So he's one of my favorites for the DH tier. But if you want to play him in the left field, uh, then you can take that gamble. Uh, Josh Gibson. Statistically, he might even be like an S tier card or an A tier card. But for me, I'm putting him B tier. Like I said in the infielders video, I think he's a fraud. It is nice that he has all these positions he can play. Obviously, he brings the most value to catcher. Um, but when you look at the card statistically, he's almost perfect. You'd probably like a little more contact, maxed out power, um, maxed out clutch, decent fielding, decent reaction, and he's not slow. Um, but I think the problem, other than him making your eardrums burst every time he makes contact, is the no quirks. It just, I don't know. The ball just doesn't come off his bat hard. I think he's a fraud. Um, I just kind of say, stay clear of him. <laughs> um, Soto, I'm going to need a refresher on his defense. The offense is there. I'm not even going to look at the hitting stats. Don't need to. 82 fielding, 88 reaction, 58 speed. So I think that's enough to drop him, honestly. Uh, eh, maybe not. He's no worse defensively than like Judge and Stanton. He is slower, but the reaction kind of makes up for it um, to where I think if you like the swing, he's definitely playable, especially as long as you leave him as primary of right field. Um, if you're starting him and Stanton, you might get into some sticky situations deciding who to put where. Um, but <laughs> overall, a very, very solid card. Uh, this Julio has not aged too great. Very similar to like James Woods. He's like James Wood if they forgot the defense, basically. 104, 97, max out power, uh, decent enough clutch, uh, and no defense, and not super fast. Like I said, James Wood, but they forgot the defense, which doesn't really matter too much. Um, especially when you're that fast, you're going to make up for most of the bad reactions you get. Uh, Griffey, S tier, easily. Uh, his swing's just fire. His swing is fire. Statistically, he's very good. A little lackluster against lefties, and lackluster for Griffey is just not maxed out. Um, but he's still 104, 115 against lefties, which gets the job done. Against righties, if you put some parallels, he's basically perfect. The clutch is a little bit low. Um, the fielding is in a very good spot. The problem's the speed. You're not playing this card in center field. He's more of a left fielder or a right fielder. Um, but he's an absolute stud, and it's Griffey at the end of the day, and you know how a swing plays. 
has like every hidden quirk. It's Griffey, obviously S tier. <laughs> um, Matt Holiday, I think he's like A, honestly. It just depends on how well you like his swing. I don't love it. Um, he's more of a high difficulty guy where he's like a contact hitter archetype. He's gonna hit a lot more line drives than he will home runs, but he still has pop. I think he's like 120, basically both contacts, 100 power, uh, decent vision if you do care about that. And the fielding's not terrible. He's got like mid-70 speed with halfway decent reaction as long as you leave him in the left field. For my money, he's probably better at first. He's probably better maybe even as a DH. But if you want to play him in left field, you can make it work. Um, and he is a very solid card. Trout. Borderline S tier, I think he's dropped to A at this point, but it just depends. It's all personal preference. The stats are a little lackluster. If you run him on the Corbin team, it makes up for it a little bit, but we're not ranking captains. Um, the power is maybe a little bit behind where you would want, just in relation to the other top end center field options. Clutch is in a very good spot. The fielding is very decent. Uh, you put some parallels on him, he gets diamond. The reaction's not awesome, but it is a very fast trout card. Usually they like to kind of taper off his speed, 92, 95, something like that. So getting 97 before parallels is very nice. And at the end of the day, it's Mike Trout. If you like trout swing, if historically you do extremely well with trout cards, easily an S tier card, um, you're going to see a lot of top 50 guys, a lot of guys in tourneys are still going to use trout just because the the contact and stuff. It doesn't matter. It's Mike Trout. He has like the best swing in the game every single year. Um, and it's not too different this time. Mini Minoso, another like high difficulty guy where if you play on high difficulties, he's got more value than if like you're an all-star player. Uh, 112 left, 125 right, 80 power left, 94 power right, max out clutch. Not awesome defensively, mid 80 speed, mid 80 reaction um he is a corner so you know you probably want to play him in a corner anyway so that's good that he's already there as a primary but his swing's really good i believe he has some solid quirks um so he's gonna get kind of that <laughs> it does not have solid quirks i lied um but he kind of has that like rod carew energy where if you hit some perfect perfects with him with the high contact and vision then it's not gonna matter a ton that the power is not great it just holds him back from being like a perfect card obviously Rap Dixon, um, I really can't rank this card. Statistically, he's probably like an A-tier guy. He's very similar to like Hank Thompson from last year, where he does a lot of everything, nothing extremely well. You could argue the contact is extremely good. The power is behind where you want it to be. The clutch is decent enough. The fielding is very good. It's not top tier, but it's very good. Um, and he is a corner guy. So he's up there with Tatis for probably the best defensive right fielder, especially if you put some parallels on him. Um, but it's not a guy that's at the, my top of my list. Here. Um, Reese Hines, this card's like, bleh, you know, uh, it's a free card. So if you're just grinding out the season awards, if you're catching up at this point, he's usable. Uh, but I don't love his swing, and he has some very lackluster stats. Um, but he is usable. Uh, RB, I do not love Ryan Braun's swing. So for me, I think he's... Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to do a stat check. So he's 125, 112, contact's basically perfect. Um, 125 power left, 93 power right. So that sucks, especially when you're gonna be hitting righty righty. But he does have first pitch, breaking ball, dead red. For my money, that's the three best quirks in the game. Um, decent enough clutch, and he's okay in the field. 81 speed, 77 reaction. It's good enough. Um, he's not going to be a minus fielder, so I think for that reason, he sneaks into this A tier. I can't for sure tell you that Matt Holiday is better than him, but I think most people will probably find that Matt Holiday is going to be better than him just because uh, the poor power against varieties and the fact that I really do not enjoy his swing, but that might just be me. Uh, Steve Finley, statistically, he's worse than Duke Snyder. His swing is probably better than Duke's. First pitch, dead red breaking ball. You can see they're starting to give out to basically everybody, but statistically just not up there with like Duke. Uh, 104, 113, 106, 104, 111 clutch. Uh, decent fielding, not great. He is a primary center fielder, so keep that in mind. You're probably going to play him in a corner where he's going to lose five reaction, um, so that sucks. Uh, he's decent. He's decent. Better swing than Duke. Everything else is probably worse. 
Teo, DH. Um, he's close to being playable in the field. For my money, he's probably my second favorite DH out of this tier so far. We have one more to add, I believe. Um, he's solid. Depends on how much you like his swing. Um, he has a slap swing, but he also has a late leg kick, in my opinion. So it's kind of weird. He's a card I don't get along well with, but a lot of people swear by this card. Um, and he's not super expensive right now. So if you want to try him out, if you are looking to fill a hole at DH, a lot of people really enjoy Teo. Um, Tim Raines, for my money, probably B tier. Just doesn't have the power. He's just a significantly worse version of Bernie. I would easily trade like 10 speed in Bernie's case for the better contact, I think, by a little bit. It's it's marginal. Um, but the power, like 92 against lefties, 73 against righties, is kind of brutal. The clutch is not in a great spot. The fielding isn't too crazy. Like 92 reaction, 99 speed is decent enough. Um, he is a primary left fielder, so this might be your best defensive left fielder in the game right now. Um, but I don't know how much weight I would put on that when you can run a guy like Chipper Jones in left field. Um, Tony Gwynn. This card, very similar to Reigns. I just wouldn't run him. Uh, Reigns, Gwynn is probably... Nah, that's a lie, actually. His power is absolutely terrible. Um, 125, 125, 72, 70. <laughs> so that's pretty brutal 125 clutch um decent fielding 95 speed 92 reaction um is a primary right fielder so he's up there with like tatis for one of the better defensive right fielders and he's got good quirks like i said first pitch dead red breaking ball if you ask me to put three on a card that's probably what i would do um and with the vision it's gonna give you slightly better timing windows so you should hit more perfects with them which should negate some of the bad power that he has but it's not gonna be all and there's gonna be a lot of times where he just flies out in front of the track especially if you play at major league parks or uh very big non-band box minor league parks um just not a card i would prioritize using uh fun player cool legend not a card i would use um honestly yeah i'm fine with that i would use everybody everybody in b tier over him with the exception of maybe Josh, Josh Gibson, but with Gibson, I had a somewhat small sample size, so it might have just been fluke, and even then, I'd probably still rather use him than Tony Gwynn. Um, Zana looks very solid. Um, it's not his primary. It's not where he has the most value. He definitely has more value as like a second baseman, but he's very solid. 114, 117, 98, 102, 116 clutch, 84 fielding, 91 speed, 82 reaction, um, so you're looking at a very good to potentially great defensive outfielder with a good swing and very all-around hitting stats. So I won't say they're great, but they are very good all-around. They're better than Trout. Um, so he's he's good. He's definitely good. I think he has more value at second base, but if you want to use him in the outfield, you can. <clears throat> Trey Turner, this is a card that is similar to like Tim Raines and Mini Minoso, where he just has an unreal swing. Um, this trade does not have any awesome quirks, so that's kind of a downside. But the swing's awesome. He's going to play better than the power that he has. Um, and he's a righty. I'd rather have a permanent righty than a permanent lefty. That's just how I am. Tyler Fitzgerald, statistically, is going to look very enticing to play in the outfield or even a shortstop. Um, but I think his swing sucks. Statistically, he's better than probably everybody in this B tier other than probably Josh Gibson. Um, but his swing is just not it, uh, in my opinion, anyway. 109, 110, 101, 125, 120 clutch, 88 fielding, 83 reaction, 99 speed. So uh, a plus fielder with good power, awesome clutch. Uh, I think what holds him back is the swing. Uh, I don't know if he would be S tier if he had a slightly better swing. If he had an awesome swing, he probably would jump up two tiers. Um, but as he is, I think he's fine um if you really enjoy him he's definitely usable uh walker i haven't used personally but i think just statistically this card is unbelievably mid uh especially for i believe he's like a headliner or maybe uh <laughs> he's a mid-round i think in the home stretch pack so i wouldn't touch this card 101 110 90 101 
uh, below average clutch also, and just a midfielder, very similar to like a Roman Anthony that we got last season where just doesn't really have a spot, especially as a primary center fielder. So you're going to play him in a corner. He's going to be even worse defensively then. And the hitting stats just don't really offset that. He would have to have an absolutely unreal swing for me to recommend using him at all. Uh, Wyatt Langford, very similar, actually. Uh, I think he's closer to Tyler Fitzgerald than Walker Jenkins. When this car came out, statistically, he was him. He was a god. Um, and he's still very good statistically, right? 125-101, 125-86. So the power right is kind of a red flag. Um, and max out clutch. Decent fielding with 81 reaction and 99 speed. So not bad, especially in our primary of left field, which is probably where you want to play him anyway. But for me personally, I think his swing is god awful. I think it's atrocious. I would steer clear of it. If you can make it work, then statistically, he probably has an argument to be in this A tier. Or maybe if you're looking at just like a primary left fielder that you want to be super fast and play a plus left field, maybe you would be S tier. But you would have to really like that swing. And I am on the complete opposite side of that. Uh, Xavier Edwards, probably bottom of A. Honestly, this is like. Tim Raines on steroids. This is what Tim Raines wants to be. 125, 125, 77, 98. So you're already working with better power. Max out clutch. Uh, 78 reaction, 90 speed. That's not going to be that much worse than what Tim Raines is defensively. And he's going to be better offensively. And I think his swing's better. I think his swing is phenomenal. Um, he's an absolute stud. People are mad I left him off the infield. I think he's probably better in the outfield just because he's like a mid-tier defensive shortstop, I think he's better in the outfield where he can use that speed a little more. Um, and then Jordan. Uh, honestly, as just a pure outfielder, he's probably in this A tier somewhere, just because the bat is that crazy. He's like Babe Ruth, but I think this card's probably going to hit better than Babe Ruth for most people but he's going to be god-awful defensively. So I think for that reason, he kind of tops off our DH tier here. I think he's probably my pick for best DH in the game. It's him or Babe or Chipper, uh, but most people will probably find a spot in the field for Chipper. So I think it's either Jordan or Babe. Uh, with the experience I had with the live series Jordan earlier in the year, he's him. He's, he's my pick for DH. Um, and yeah, guys, that is the list. If you want to go back over it, I will link it down in the description so you don't have to watch the entire video again. Um, but pretty happy with that. Let me know your thoughts. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody too egregious. I know there were some Team Affinity guys that I decided to leave off. Uh, but overall, fairly happy. Until next time, peace.